Please pray with me. On this blessed night that we celebrate, we ask you, Almighty God, to hear our prayer. There is so much that is rushing by us outside of these doors. So fast-paced and frenetic is our world, and we wonder, can this be the celebration of the Prince of Peace? And yet you remind us by your holy word of who you are. And you remind us afresh of who we are and to whom we belong. The eternal God, the God, the creator of the entire universe, is our loving Heavenly Father who has come to us Come to this place of your creation to receive us as your own. Slow us in the busyness of the pace of this season and help us to rejoice in the matchless name of Jesus, in whose name we gather and pray. Amen. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear friends in Jesus Christ. As Pastor noted when we opened the service tonight, this is the last Wednesday night. A season of Advent coming to a quick end, and how quick it has been for all of us. Can you imagine that this Saturday already, a couple days from now, is Christmas Eve. When the sun goes down, Advent comes to an end, it will be over. And the eve of Christmas will be upon us. There's no question that every one of us have been inundated once again by all of the attacks upon us to grab attention, to buy the things, to go shopping, to wrap the presents, to go to the parties, to be busy, 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 busy in this season where we try to, and we always say every year we're going to stop it, don't we? Try to stuff so much into such a short period of time. Outside these walls, it's a hurried world. The bustle of preparing for Christmas. The time that we recognize clearly God has come to us. Inside this place, however, inside what we call sanctuary, Advent is different. Almighty God has promised that he will come now, hear those words carefully. Almighty God has promised that he will come. So we wait. We wait with prayer. We wait with comfort. We wait with an expecting and unexpecting joy. This evening, we learn about true worship. True worship is identified in 2 Samuel chapter 7, our text of the Old Testament reading. True worship. To come into the presence of our living God and understand what it is that he calls us into. He calls us into true worship. This evening's reading tells us about a conversation between King David, Nathan, and God Almighty himself. Now, the topic of the conversation is quite interesting. It's the house of God. God's house, God's dwelling place. And the conversation between Nathan and David and Nathan's interaction with Almighty God and the message he is to deliver can teach us quite a bit about what it is we are here tonight to do, and that is worship. Seven and a half years after anointing, seven and a half years after the anointing upon him as king of Israel, King David comes. He's in Hebron. And in that area of Hebron, David has defeated the Jebusites. 
David and his powerful armies, through the power of God, has captured the capital city. He gave the city now, instead of Hebron, gives it a new name, Jerusalem, the holy city of God. And he makes Jerusalem the new capital. Now, when the Jebusites had lived there, they worshipped Baal. If you've been listening over the past several months, as uh, Pastor Tony has gone over carefully about the prophets of Baal and those who worshipped Baal, the kind of insane things that they did to grab the attention of their pathetic, disgusting God. Baal was a, uh, a very sad, polytheistic adoration an abomination of this cultic prostitution of idolatry. And yet these people gathered and they worshipped this sickening God they called Baal. And in the midst of that prostitution and that carrying on of this disgusting worship, David now comes to cleanse the city. How do you cleanse a city after that kind of disgusting display? over those many years of disgusting worship of a false and pathetic non-God. But there it is that David brings the tabernacle of the living God. He makes sure that the Ark of the Covenant comes right to the heart of Jerusalem. And he brought the name and the presence of the living God, the Lord of hosts, into the midst of this city that once was a bastion of worshiping a false god with disgusting idolatry. And God blessed David's reign in Jerusalem. It's unique at this time in history because the 12 tribes of Israel are united together under David. And with the help of God, David defeated the enemies of Israel. Soon there was peace. God had established this new nation. God had established it with his hand upon David, his servant. David, the king. And so as we read the text of scripture in 2 Samuel that Steve read for us tonight, King David looks out the window of his new palace in Jerusalem and was struck by a haunting fact that while he lived in luxury the Lord God Almighty still dwelt in a humble tabernacle. Now this was a deep theological issue for David. So David talked to the prophet Nathan and Nathan who was his spiritual confidant, his pastor, his father confessor, listened carefully to what David had to say and the king said to Nathan, See now, I dwell in this house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go now and do all that is in your heart, for the Lord your God is with you. You hear those words from Nathan? The Lord your God is with you. Now, King David was a builder. He built an army. He built a kingdom. He built a city. And he built a beautiful, magnificent palace. And he was also a quite gifted composer and a musician. And what a night was before him as he heard the prophet Nathan tell him, do what's in your heart, for the Lord your God is with you. And you can imagine the excitement of David as he began his plan. Too excited probably to sleep. Busily working out in his mind the plans for this magnificent temple that he would build. But according to the text of our scripture tonight, something interesting happened to Nathan. As the Lord God Almighty comes to Nathan and instructs Nathan telling him to tell King David that King David is not, is not permitted to build the temple. Wow. 
One of the greatest disappointments probably in King David's remarkable life was to be told by God Almighty himself that David would not have the privilege to build the temple, to build that beautiful place of celebration and worship as David considered the palace in which he lived, he would not build the temple of God. David, whose liturgical compositions even bless us today as we celebrate in the church and hear some of the music and read the text of Scripture that is given over as David's hand to the word of the living God as God instructed David to write. Through the prophet Nathan, God told David, I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from their wanderings. From the time the people of Israel came out of Egypt, I have not lived in a house, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. These words reach David and tell us it is God. Listen now. Listen carefully. It is is Almighty God who determines how He reveals Himself to people. It is Almighty God who determines what true worship is. Now remember, the pagans that lived in that city of Hebron before David conquered the city, before David cleaned out the Baal worship, those pagans who lived there for them, worship was all about what they did for their God. How could they get closer to their God? How would it be easy to gain this God's favor? How could we convince him that we were really close to him? They even tried to entertain their God. They entertained him even at points with obscene gestures. All of this in the hopes that the God and goddesses that they worshipped would turn around and bless them with some kind of God-anointed fertility. The worship of the one true God is totally different. The worship of the one true God is about what God does for us. His word to us. What it is that God does for us. The true worship of God is about how God comes to us and how God reveals himself to us. True worship of God is how God himself paid the price that wound up earning our favor with him. He pays the price. We earn the favor from the gift of God. And so in this evening's reading, God tells David that he will be with David in quite an unusual way. And we know that way. We have run through it so many times and we miss it so often. At first it seems all about how God will bless David. But eventually there's more. It's not only about how God blesses David, but how God blesses the entire world, yea, even you and me this night. Hear the word of the living God to David. I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. A violent man shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Our text for tonight. The Lord will make for you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. You hear that? Your kingdom, your house, will be made sure forever. Your throne, God's words, your throne, your throne will be established forever. 
Now, when God speaks of an eternal throne, he is speaking of much more than the dynasty of King David. He here is talking about bringing his gifts to us in a most unusual way. You know it so well. Take a look with me at St. Luke, the second chapter, verses 4 to 5. Let's read this together. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Do you hear it in there? The Lord's promise of an eternal kingdom and steadfast love would ultimately be fulfilled in this child of Mary. This child of Mary who bore the iniquity of us all and in our stead, in our place, was disciplined with the rod of evil, cruel men and was crucified. This is the one who is both David's son and David's Lord. God determines, Almighty God determines how he comes to us in worship. He once came as a baby and as that infant born in Bethlehem, he came to take our place. He lived the perfect life that we could not live. He died so that we might live forever. He rose so that we might be able to live with him, sealed with his promise. And now we wait for him to come to us one last time. We wait. And in the meantime, while we wait, while we wait, he comes in word and he comes in sacrament, joined together. Word and sacrament. To be with us. To be with us physically. Not just in some spiritual realm. Not just in a prayer of hope. But he comes to us with the physical means of grace. Body given. Blood shed. He comes to us to be with us as we wait in these final days. Now, we would not choose such simple means, would we? Uh, no, we would have our God and our King come to us in a manner more impressive, more ostentatious, uh, much more worthy of the great public relations broadcasting out there. It would be so that everything's timed in a perfect way and Almighty God would come and we would make sure the world would know it by virtue of what we would want of our God and our King. Oh yes, we would have him come more impressive, more to our own individual liking. Nonetheless, it is God who determines how God reveals himself and how God reveals himself to you and to me this very night that we find ourselves in worship and in celebration of him. Now how did David respond? He understood that God had chosen to reveal himself in the tabernacle and the ark. And so there it was that David went into the humble tent where the Lord revealed himself. And there he sat down and prayed God's own words back to God. David thanked God for being with him. Thanked God for being able to be the king. And he thanked God for redeeming his people Israel from Egypt and its gods with the promise that they would be the children of Israel, his people forever. He thanked God for promising to establish an eternal house for David. And on the basis of God's word, God's word, David found the courage and David found the strength to conclude his prayer by asking the Lord God Almighty to bless him and to bless his house so that it might continue in God's presence forever. Now from this event in David's life, we learn clearly that God comes to us in ways that he chooses. 
we learn that somehow from David's sinful flesh would come forth the sinless one of God. Process that? David, king of Israel, sinner though he be, from his line would come the perfect, blessed Savior. We who now sit and wait at the altar of Almighty God know that this sinless one is Jesus our Lord. We know that he has established an eternal house and he has established his eternal throne with his suffering and his death upon the cross. We know that true worship is about him coming to us. Him coming to us with his gifts that he lavishes before us. And we know that while we wait, this sinless Jesus comes to us in, with, and under the bread and the wine. He comes to us with his holy word. And so here you sit, here you wait, in God's house. In God's house, where his word and his Holy Spirit give you the courage and the strength to pray, to give thanks, to confess the faith, and ask the Lord God Almighty to bless you, to bless your families, and to bless this, our congregation, with which he has blessed us with each other, so that we may dwell in his presence, not just tonight, not just tomorrow, but we'll dwell in his presence forever in our Advent worship. And as we come to the threshold of Christmas, like David, we will say back to God what he has revealed to us through his saving deeds and his holy word in creed, in prayers, in the hymns we sing, the songs we sing, we confess and we praise God for sending his son, our savior Jesus, to live, to die, to rise again, to atone for our sins and to grant to us in his love eternal life. And while we wait, we worship. It's not about what we do for God. It's not about what we do for God. It is all about the God who reveals himself to us and the God who serves us. He serves us with the means of his word and sacrament in order to strengthen our faith until that day when the world will end and our Lord Jesus Christ will reveal himself in order to take us home with him. And take us home with him he will. But we wait. Advent, wait. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, guard and protect our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.